Our trip through the Amazon rainforest. 11 days of driving with mostly no cell phone reception. That might sound uneventful, but it really wasn't. Especially if you don't mind spending at least six hours in the car every day. Not always pretty, but a real road trip adventure. In this video, you'll get some information on how to travel by car on the Trans-Amazonian Highway and why we chose car over ferry when traveling BR-230 from Belém to Porto Velo. If you're planning a trip through the Amazon rainforest or want to see what we experience there, keep watching. <laughs> After our visits in São Luís in Belém, we decided to embark on our journey through the Trans-Amazonian Highway. We were considering a ferry because it would be an interesting experience, but after doing some research, chose to drive all the way. Due to missing streets or bridges, we had to take a short ferry from time to time whenever we crossed the river. They run daily until 9 p.m., once or twice an hour, for a price of around 2 to 30 reais. Some info on the Trans-Amazonian Ferry. There is no direct ferry connection from Belém to Porto Velo, but you need to take a couple of ferries in order to reach your destination. And if you want to ship your car at the same time, there are fewer options available. We consulted two different companies about prices and travel time and were told that for one journey, from Bilim to Manaus, so about half the distance, the journey takes five days. With an SUV 4x4, it would cost around 1,500 reais to ship the car and approximately another 1,300 reais for a cabin or master suite for two. Alternatively to the cabin they offer Ain Heiji, which is sleeping in a community room in hemocks for 400 reais per person for five days. All of this includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After consulting these agencies, we realized that taking a ferry with our car would be out of our budget. Plus, we wanted to experience the road and be flexible with where we want to go, which did not always work out so well, as you see later. So driving it was. It took us 11 days to drive from Berlin to Porto Velo, with at least 6 hours of driving every day. We usually drove and explored the area during the day, and despite hearing beforehand that the area is known for deforestation, it still made us speechless to see with our own eyes. At night, we stopped at one of the rather scarce accommodations on the way. Hotels or posadas were mostly simple and remote, and sometimes more easily accessible by plane than by car. We planned to stay in some bigger towns whenever we could, such as Tucurui, Santarém, or Porto Velo. With all the off-roading through sand, mud, forest, and the occasional carelessness of our fellow humans, we needed to take care of our car from time to time. We were there during dry season, so it was not as muddy as we had seen from other travelers. But after all, it was the rainforest, and we encountered our daily rain and thunder, which made the road even more challenging. Due to the muddy roads, we once even crashed into a bush. But we were lucky, compared to other cars and trucks that were stuck in the mud or had fallen off the street. Here. <laughs> 
we usually use Google Maps to find our way. And since there is no cell phone reception or internet on the way, we downloaded offline maps beforehand. That did help us navigate. But sometimes you notice how the road gets worse and worse and worse. There are lots of paths that Google Maps wants to send you on that do not exist or have not existed in a very long time. But if you're traveling with a Paul, you know that a Paul wants what a Paul wants. So right now we are uh, a little bit uh, in a tricky situation. I think we should try the street because eventually maybe it gets better. Not a great idea. This is not meant for cars. Oh, this doesn't look right. This can't be a street. I need some imagination. But where's the street? After some trial and error, we did agree on a path, even if not knowing where it leads to. What do you think? I think this used to be the path. Really? Yeah, and I think. Uh, it could be challenging because all the bushes are grown in, right? So this would be a very painful experience for the Prado. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just drove up to a house in the middle of nowhere to ask people and they were nice enough to show us the way to the next path we should take. Some roads are in the process of being built. There we could see trees that have marks on them. These are the ones that keep standing there, seemingly left alone. Maybe these showed that they weren't allowed to be cut? If this is true, we don't know. Maybe you do. Let me know in the comments. In the end, we discovered very few of the old trees that we were hoping to find when crossing the actual rainforest on the Trans-Amazonian Highway. The biggest trees we encountered at Belém Botanical Gardens and sadly, other unexpected places. If you know where to find them when driving through the rainforest, let us know. Finally, despite all difficulties, it was very adventurous. Having no cell phone reception and driving many hours in between villages with barely any other people in between was another memorable experience of our Brazil trip. Since people have been asking about our budget for our trip, I decided to create a video on our daily budget for accommodation and what you get for your money in Brazil. Everybody's just here. Hi. <laughs> what jungle are you from? Switzerland. <laughs> Forest, <laughs> Switzerland jungle. Please like and subscribe to not miss my next video of our road trip through Brazil and the rest of South America.